Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. This is the first tutorial after the release of iOS 10 and it's the last tutorial before STC 2016. So today we're going to focus on something that you're going to like probably because as I've seen in the last videos you really like animation stuff and we're going to deal with animations today again and um, this is something related to blur and vibrancy effects that were introduced already in iOS 7 but it's going to be pretty cool since um, let me just show you the effect uh, we're animating the background here so that this is going to be blurred and the vibrancy effect is applied to our image. And we also animate in this little pop-up here, which uh, could be an add item or uh, whatever you actually like to place in there. And if we press done, we have the reversed animation. And as I've always said, uh, already said, um, it's the last tutorial before STC 2016. And if you don't know what this is, this is the Swift tutorial conference. It's going to take place um, between uh, September 21st and 22nd. And STC is a free online conference, so you can join from all over the world. And um, it's going to be free, so um, just hit the register now button. And um, you're going to pre be prepared for um, a lot of the new frameworks and I APIs that were introduced um, at WWDC that come with iOS 10. So just have a look at the conference schedule. Uh, we're going to deal with uh, speech recognition, with SiriKit, uh, with CloudKit and SpriteKit for Apple Watch. A lot of great stuff is waiting for you with uh, a lot of great speakers um, that are giving their best to give you a great experience and um, to get all of the source code and everything. You can purchase um, the um, the Swift Tutorial Conference bundle and you will find the uh, purchase area here below in the Swift Tutorial Conference website in the lower section here. And if you need early access to all of the source files and um, all of the videos that were recorded from the STC, then you can go for the early access bundle and get all of the code and all of the uh, videos right after they were um, they were recorded at the same day. And you also support the all of the speakers who are offering um, their knowledge for free for you. So go ahead and have a look at STC 2016. It's going to be great. And um, make sure to hit the register now button. It's completely free. And now we're going to dive right into creating this nice looking animation and you're going to be amazed how quick we can do that. And of course we're going to use Xcode 8 for that and we're going to use Swift 3. So we're creating a new project by pressing Command Shift N or uh, create a new Xcode project. And we want to create a single view application and let's just call this visual effect or whatever you like. And for the image in the background you can choose of course whatever image you like. I have this boat image right here, which I'm going to import into my Xcode project. So I'm selecting the assets folder in my project right here. And this is just a 2x version. Make sure to also provide a 3x version if you use this for a productive app, um, since you're going to need this for the iPhone 6s plus and for the 6 plus and for the 7 plus, of course. And um, for this demo purpose here, we're simply going to use the 2x version. So what we want to do here is first of all make this a little bigger. So let me go ahead and do that. Come on. All right. Um, and here we are at the um, in our main storyboard and the first element that we need to place in our storyboard is a uh, an image view which I'm going to type into my object library here and bring that up. And I'm going to make it the size of this view controller. And then I'm selecting the BG image, the background image, which looks slightly distorted now. So we're changing the content mode to aspect fill, a lot better already. And now we're selecting the size inspector and set some um, auto resizing masks here. So there's no need to use um, auto layout actually, because we're pinning it to all the edges and then also make sure that it resizes with the screen so that our application runs in all sizes and also in different orientations. And earlier you had to hard code the visual effects and um, you need to think about what to apply first, a vibrancy effect or a blur effect. Uh, but uh, for a while now, you can simply use a visual, so-called visual effect view. And as you can see right here, I'm typing visual 
into my object library here. And what we get is a visual effect view with blur and vibrancy. And this is what we're going to use. So as you can already see, when I move it around, the blur and vibrancy is automatically um, added in Interface Builder. So I'm simply resizing that to the correct size and I'm applying the same auto resizing masks right here. And in the attributes inspector, you can actually play around with all of the um, with all of the settings like the blur, uh, if we want it to have to be extra light or just light or dark, and we are going to set that to light, and that's all there is to it. And to make sure that we have our um, our navigation bar, we're selecting our view controller right here. And make sure to click on edit uh, on editor, embed in and navigation controller, and that's it. Now we have our navigation controller, and what we can do now is add a bar button item to our screen here to our navigation bar, and I have just selected the st uh, the system item add to get this little plus icon. But of course, you can decide freely what you want to do here. And for our pop up, we're not going to use a new view controller, we're simply going to use a um, UI view. So I'm typing in UI view here. And here it is. And there is a nice little technique that you can use here instead of directly placing it here um, on your view controller, we can also place it here in the top bar and get this little extension to our view controller here. And this is pretty nice because now we can design our uh, our pop up a little better. And I'm choosing kind of this size here. And to get the appropriate effect here, I'm going to select make sure that I have a white color selected as my background color. And then I'm choosing other and I'm reducing the opacity a little so that the blur shines through slightly. And then we can, add, let's say a label, place it right here. I said that is going to be add item. Of course, you can adjust that for every purpose you need. I'm going to change the font here to a custom font and Helvetica and I'm going to choose a light um, style and I'm increasing the size a little here. Make sure this slightly better fits the content size here of our text. And I'm going to add a little button here, which simply says done. And here we go. And now let's set some auto resizing masks here as well. I'm pinning this to the bottom. And as you can see, it is pinned to the bottom center. And let's do the same for the add item title right here. And let's also make sure to select the attributes inspector with the title selected and make sure that the background is transparent. So set this to default since uh, if we don't do that, we have a strange um, white background here that doesn't look too good. Um, and with that done, actually, let's move to code and let's bring up the assistant editor and let's uh, add some Let's add some outlets here. So first of all, what we are going to need is an outlet for our view. So let's add that right here. Let's call this add item view. And we're also going to need a outlet for our visual effect view. So let's select our visual effect view, drag it with press control key on your keyboard to our assistant editor. Let's call this visual effect view, hit connect. And then we're also going to need a um, and an action for our add button right here. So let's press control on our keyboards and drag that right below view to load. Let's call that let's make an action and let's call it add item. And that should be it. So now let's also <laughs> select this done button that should be the last one. And let's um, also make an action here. And tell this to dismiss pop up something like that. Um, so we are going to do that all of that in view in the view controller. So let's uh, close the assistant editor bring up view controller dot swift. And the first thing we need to do actually is to deactivate our visual effect for now because once we open up our application, we don't really need um, the visual effect because we want to apply it first when we click on the or press the plus button. So to have to to make it a little easier to later apply that we're going to create a new property and call that effect 
um, and this is going to be a UI visual effect. And we're going to store the effect that we have applied in our storyboard in this property. So let's take the effect and use our visual effect view and access its effect property and store it right here. And then let's remove it. So now let's use visual effect view and effect and set this to nil. And with that, we are removing the um, effect that was applied. And let's run this really quickly in the simulator so that you can see um, that from the interface builder where we have really applied this effect to the simulator now we shouldn't see any effect we should clearly see our boat and we do so with that done let's make some further adjustments here in view to load for example let's apply the corner radius for our add item view so i'm taking the add item view i'm accessing its layer and its cone radius property and simply set this to five and now we can start thinking about the animations and first of all let's create a function for animate in animate in we don't need any parameters here and the first thing we want to do is actually add our item view to our uh, view controller so let's say self.view add sub view and we take the add item view and add it to our view controller and now we can um, position it correctly so we take again our add item view and take its center property and set it to self.view.center and with that done we can start for preparing for the animations and if you've noticed earlier the pop-up slightly um, scales down so to apply this effect we need to make it a little bigger before we can um, before we can scale it down so all we need to do here is take our item view again use its transform property and now use the um, transform method here and initialize it with scale so we simply um, use a scale value of 1.3 here. This makes it slightly bigger. And then we will set the alpha value to zero so that it's, uh, our add item view is invisible and we're going to animate it in by increasing the alpha value. And that's actually all there is for the preparations. And, the and now we can um, use UI view and the simplest version of the animate function with duration and an animations block. And let's say our animation is going to take 0.4 seconds. And now let's decide what we actually want to animate. So first of all, we take our visual effect view and its effect property and set it to self dot effect and we have to use self here because we're within a closure and this is also the reason why we have stored our effect earlier in this property so that we can easily add it right now and then as you've seen we have um, set the alpha value of our add item view to zero um, and now it's simply um, a simple change of setting the alpha value to one and the last thing we need to do is uh, restore its original size. So we use view, use its transform um, property and set it to its former identity. And then we can uh, give this a try if we have a look at the add item function and simply call the animate in function right there. And now let's run this and see how it looks. And here we are in the simulator. It's already running. And now we click plus, and here we go. We have this nice effect here. And depending on your um, on your hardware, on your Mac, um, this animation can look a little slow and uh, not so nice as on actual iPhone. So make sure to test this on, on, a, on a real device if it doesn't look too good on your Mac. But now let's also handle pressing on the done button, which is pretty simple as well. We are going to create a, another function for that. Um, so let me zoom in again, animate out this time. And again, no parameters needed. And animate out is going to work uh, pretty similar to what we already did. We are using UI view and animate with duration, but this time we're going to use a completion block to remove our pop-up from the super view later. So let's make sure to select this function here. We are going to change its duration to 0.3 seconds. I thought this looks pretty nice. And for the animations, let's say self.itemView 
and let's transform it and again make it a little bigger we are simply co uh, copying this line here with our scale and insert it right here this time we want to make it invisible so let's set the uh, add item view and its alpha value to zero and we want to remove the visual effect so that our background isn't blurred and there is no vibrancy anymore so let's say self the visual effect view dot effect equals nil and that's it and now all we need to do and what is left to do is implementing the completion block right here um, giving it a success argument here which we are not going to use and then again add item view and remove from super view and then we should also make sure to call this function right here in this miss pop-up we're saying animate out and we're running this on our simulator and let's see how this looks so we're back in the simulator and i'm pressing the plus button and we're animating in i'm pressing done and we're animating out and as you have seen this is a pretty simple effect but it looks really terrific so thanks for watching and i'll hope to see you all at swift tutorial conference 2016 next week so goodbye and see you there